HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Center School Reuse Advisory Team hosted their first public forum. We have the latest in Hiller sports, including a look at the Hiller's Swim Team Senior Night, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The Hopkinton Hillers swim team captured their eighth combined TVL title in a row. The Hiller girls finished first overall on the girls side with a score of 394. Westwood was second at 225. The Hillers boys were second overall with a score of 306. Ashland finished first on the boys side with 423 points. Hopkinton combined for a score of 700 which put them above second place Ashland, who finished with 610. Some of the winners from the Hillers included Abby Fisher, Bridget Belger, Grace Cavanaugh, Maddie Stoss, Cassie White, Rachel Zale, Ansley Worrell, and Alex Matsukis. The Hiller girls indoor track and field team also took home a TVL title. On Sunday, February 4th, Hopkinton finished with 91 points. That's 45 points above second place Medway. Some of the Hiller first place finishes included junior Ashley Donnelly in the 55 meter dash, senior Caitlin Halloran in the 600 meter run, and sophomore Angie Grabmeyer in the girls long jump. Hopkinton also won the four by 200 meter relay. The Hopkins School Music Department shared this picture on Twitter. Students acted out different parts of the John Williams theme for the Olympics. The Winter Olympic Games officially kicked off on Thursday, February 8th. 13 athletes with Massachusetts ties are competing this year. The Center School Reuse Advisory Team was formed to decide the future of the Center School building. This past weekend, they hosted their first public forum to seek input from the public. The Center School Reuse Advisory Team hosted their first public forum. To start off the forum, member of the advisory team, John Pavlov, shared what the committee will be doing. So the Center School Reuse Advisory Team will recommend for the Board of Selectmen's consideration a plan for the Center School building and property that will provide the Board with valuable outside viewpoints on the use and development of the property. This plan shall outline the community's vision, and I think that's the important word, community's vision, for the future of the property and produce recommendations for the board's considerations that align with the aspirations of the community. Uh, know who the members are at this point, and getting a little deeper into the charge from the selectmen, make recommendations to the board of selectmen regarding the design of an interactive public process. This is step one of the public process. Guide creation of plan for the Skinner School building and grounds. Ensure that the plan reflects the community's aspirations. Provide an assessment of the broader neighborhood context and the appropriateness of particular uses given the site, quality of life, and visual characteristics of the area valued by the community. Um, I know all, you know, um, the, the building, it's a historical building, it's right on the common, um, you know, it's certainly an asset to the town. Uh, create recommendations that serve as an invaluable outside resource to the board throughout the decision making process. Gather input from a broad base of citizens by reaching out to the community through a community visioning, um, visioning workshop and by conducting focus groups and surveys, uh, all of which are underway hopefully. You know, people have seen the surveys in the Hopkinton Independent, online, et cetera. And uh, conduct public education and out, 
reach on the planning process is our final step. Um, the building is 52,000 square feet and the lot size is 11.7 acres. John then talked about the potential uses of the center school building. The potential uses were divided into three categories, town needs, town partnership needs, and disposition of property. So from priority one, town needs, school administration, office space, um, that would eliminate the office space rental that we're doing today, uh, move it in. Parks and Rec office space, um, again, that would eliminate some uh, rent that we're doing today. Office space for other town departments, so relocate some of the town departments into center school. Community center or after school care, um, town record storage, and town committee meeting rooms. So uh, uh, some additional priority one needs, uh, life skills program using the kitchen and the gym, uh, the gym use as a gym gymnasium, or you know, possibly uh, a large auditorium for, uh, for something that would not fit into the, uh, the new library, for instance, in the new meeting room in the library. So priority two, um, again, the partnership ideas. <coughs> Youth Center, HCAM Studio, Senior Housing, Fitness Facility, Meeting Space for um, Community Organizations, you know, the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, the Hopkinton Running Club, um, etc. Donation storage to support, uh, space to support charities, you know, potentially even Mass Bay Community um, um, College classes. In Priority 3, sale for redevelopment is housing. Um, a zoning change may be required if we do that. Sale for office space or retail development, if we decided as a town to do that, that would also require a, um, that would require a zoning change. Um, potentially reuse as a school again, a charter school. And uh, delem demolition of the building additions. Um, in other words, retain the historic building, but remove the two buildings in back and you'll potentially use that as uh, additional parking or um, uh, whatever use, including land bank banking the property for future needs. Members of the community also had some comments at the public forum. It seems as though there's uh, a large demand for space for a lot of uh, town groups. The gymnasium would be utilized, the, the uh, cafeteria could be utilized and all the other buildings. There's many, many town groups. The town hall is overcrowded. A lot of that building is compliant. It, it, you would need to add ADA compliant bathrooms for sure. But if you use the third floor for storage, which I, I saw that there was a need for storage, then you wouldn't need to have people up on the third floor. Before you consider taking those 12 classrooms and, and demolishing that for a pocket park or whatever else, I would caution that we just named off, you know, 30 different organizations that could use that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say that is compliant, um, that it could be used by a ton of places, a ton of, I mean, a ton of uh, organizations, clubs, et cetera, in town. I'm on the uh, family day committee and we meet at my house, we meet at somebody else's house because the library is closed the times that we'd like to meet. So this building might not might be closed as well. It might be cost prohibitive to open it every single night, but um, as town boards, we're looking for space. So that could be used as well. You can view the full public forum on the HCAM YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAM TV. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll take you to Hiller Swimming Senior Night we have the latest in Hiller's sports, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more on the way. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. This week on HCAM. Center School Reuse Advisory Team held their first public forum at the Senior Center. Community Center. A community center. This would involve not only the young people, but the older people, the middle people. And that's, it would involve and be a lot of pride in the community. That's it. Thank you. Thank and you, B. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
This week on Hopkin Coffee Break, the lady sit down with author Ann Latham to discuss her new book. They go to meetings eager to get something done, and the absolute biggest problem is not any of the rules you hear about, but the lack of clarity about what needs to be different when you're done. Mm -hmm. And you should never start a meeting if you don't know what concrete thing. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Hillers swim team hosted senior night festivities this past week prior to their meet with Foxborough. Here is a look as the Hopkinton Hillers swim team recognized their seniors. All right, so we begin with Brooklyn Briner, greeted by her parents, April and Joel. April and Joel, parents of Brooklyn Briner, senior graduating. Hugs all around by mom and dad. Kelly Burke, greeted by her parents, Kathy and Jim. Kelly runs through the gauntlet of swimmers. Joined by the rest of her family as well. Mallory Pishaw, greeted by her parents, Melissa and Will. It's the Burke family, all the families out there. That's the way you want to see it. The Pishaw family as well, Pishaw family. Melissa and Will greeting their senior, Mallory. Ben Pessum, greeted by mom, Rebecca. Senior Ben. Greeted on deck by his mom, Rebecca. Julia Pillarella. Greeted by mom and dad, Susan and David. Julia hustles through the gauntlet and jogs over to mom and dad. Andrew Puttanzoni, greeted by coaches Karen, Terry, and Jeff Libby. As Karen wheels herself over there with a bad leg. Andrew is the team manager. Coming through now, Harley and Sam Richardson. Greeted by Martha on deck. Greeting the two seniors, Harley and Sam Richardson. And a couple others from the family. Martha and a couple of the brothers and uh, brothers, a couple sisters. Coming through now is Andrew Way. Senior swimmer. Record holder. Greeted by her mother and father, Lee Chen and Jay. First of the captains, Bridget Belger. Being greeted by Parents, Maureen and John. Maureen and John, normally the folks that you see up here on the camera. John, been a long time voice in the booth. Greeting their daughter, Bridget. Ian Holmes being greeted by Maureen and David, mother and father. Senior captain runs through throwing some high fives. A lot of hugs, a lot of tears as these seniors get ready to say goodbye to the Hiller Swimming Program, Maggie Miller. Now she's greeted by her mother and father, Holly and Phil. Pictures being taken first as Maggie sits tight. 
And a run over to mom and dad. That's Holly and Phil greeting senior captain Maggie Miller. Caitlin O'Connor greeted by mother and father, Mary Alice and Chris, and the rest of the family. Live and die by Springsteen, the O'Connor family does. M.A. and Chris, big Springsteen fans. The rest of the family is as well. Caitlin, senior captain, and the rest of the family that's out there. The O'Connors. Next captain is Maddie Staus, senior diver. Greeted by first coach Jim Brader and Ann and Jim Staus. And that's Kate Staus out there, Green her, her sister as well. Finally coming through the gauntlet, Rachel Zale. Greeted by parents Becky and Steve. As the last of the captains comes through. As you can see, there is a line of seniors graduating. A lot of big shoes to fill. A lot of big personalities to fill. A lot of heart to fill. A lot of pictures, a lot of fun. Again, this isn't about a score tonight. This isn't about times. This is about a team that has gone through a lot. A team that is probably one of the closest and teams filled with heart that I have ever seen here in Hiller Swimming. So great group of kids. Big round of applause. Believe it or not, we are in the final month of the winter sports regular season, and just about all Hiller teams are in the running or have clinched a postseason spot. Here is a look at the latest Hopkinton Hillers highlights. On Saturday, February 3rd, the 11-3-1 Halston Panthers met up with the 11-2-1 Hopkinton Hillers for a crucial TVL showdown. The Hillers got things started off quickly. Hamlet met up with Cooper D. Cristoforo. Hamlet with the shot there, and the secondary attempt is going to be a goal. Sean Walsh, how about that? Less than two minutes in. And Tommy Hamlet making a nice steal off the boards, and Sean Walsh going right to the front of the net, like he was supposed to be. The goal by Sean Walsh came less than two minutes in at 13.06 left in the first period. And then just 10 minutes of clock later, Hopkinton struck again. Thinking about the shot here, and that one is going to be off of Bridges. Lindquist with a secondary uh -huh. attempt, and that's a goal! Matt Lindquist with a little bit of power on it, puts it right. Nice fortuitous rebound there right out to him, and he put everything into that. Kind of a knuckle puck, but right into the top corner. Yeah, puts it right to the stick side corner. What a goal by Lindquist. The Hillers held the 2-0 lead heading into the third with some great defensive play and goaltender play by Dylan O'Leary. Will Abbott would put the icing on the cake at 4.15 left in the third. Simos puts it around the end board. Back to the neutral zone. Abbott on a break. Abbott has other plans here as he takes it to the right circle. The that's wrister it. and that's a goal! How about that? Olsen has the power play, but the Hillers get the goal. Will Abbott. Whenever you think there's a game that Will Abbott might not have a point, <laughs> he usually changes that pretty quickly. He's always around the puck, and just a great stop and go move there. He had the defenseman frozen. He didn't know which way he was going to go, inside or out, and then just drove around him. Stuck that through the pads. Another example of great stick work by Will Abbott, and he has his 33rd point of the season. The Hopkinton Hillers get a step closer to clinching the TVL as they took down Holliston 3 to nothing. Hopkinton improved to 12-2 and 1 with the win, while Holliston falls to 11-4 and 1. To De Peron. This is it. It's going to be a buzzer beater. You're either going to win, tie, or lose. Right now. For three. No, and that's it. Hopkinton hangs on. The Hillers take the 63-61 win. 
on Friday, February 2nd. The Hillers boys hung on to beat Ashland on the road, 63 to 61. Ben McKenzie went off in the game and racked up 26 points. The Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team has been white hot lately. After losing to a good Bellingham team, the Hillers won six straight games until a 50 to 47 loss and a good battle against Dover Sherborne on Tuesday, February 6th. The Hillers are now nine and seven on the season and just have to win one more game to get into the postseason. The Hillers girls basketball team also picked up a road win against Ashland on Friday, February 2nd. Ivy Goglin was the star of the game, racking up 20 points and 19 rebounds. The Hillers took the game 66 to 35 and improved to 11 and four with the win. The Lady Hillers followed up with another road win in Dover Sherborne, 57 to 29. Hopkinton is now 12 and four overall and will continue to try to rack up wins to fight for some home games in the postseason. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, February 9th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with author Ann Latham on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, February 12th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, February 13th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Dedham Marauders live on HCAM Ed. And also at 6.30, the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, February 14th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, February 15th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, February 16th at 5 p.m., local artists share their songs and poetry on a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers vs. Ashland basketball games will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at the Center School Reuse Advisory Team Public Forum and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. The Hopkinton Board of Selectmen congratulated five Boy Scouts who achieved the rank of Eagle Scout. Okay, this is a, this is our favorite time of the year when these go up. And actually, the one great thing about Hopkinton is we do this several times a year. Um, the Board of Selectmen will consider proclamations for Eagle Scouts for Troop One. This is such a great town. I mean. We have so many Eagle Scouts. We owe so much to the parents and to the troops 
um, how we, we can produce them, it's just incredible. I'm just so happy to do this one. Okay, so we've got uh, George Daniel Bradbury, Joseph Harrison, Gabriel Lopez, and Zachary Riddabush. We as a community are extremely proud, which is why we do this. We know your parents are proud, and we know your troop leaders are proud, and we're glad they're all here tonight too. Uh, I just congratulate all of you. Job well done, and uh, Hopkinton is for the better because of you and your parents and all that you've done for our community. Thank you. Uh, they needed to learn and, and demonstrate commitment, trustworthiness, love of country, persistence, loyalty, strength, all the qual qualities that we, we want to see in our leaders. Each of the five Eagle Scouts talked about the major project they worked on to benefit the community. So uh, my name is Zach Ritterbush. Uh, my project was over at College Rock down Route 85 towards Milford. Uh, it consisted of replacing the benches that were in the College Rock rock climbing area and also refurbishing the trail sign post as well as scrubbing graffiti off the rock wall face um, and uh, printing out some trail maps <coughs> and large size trail maps for the trail sign. Uh, that was the essence of the project. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Barnes of the Conservation Commission for helping me out with the project and, and representing the Conservation Commission, giving me the opportunity. Great. My project was over, uh, it was called Wiley Woods Project. Um, it was over by Franklin Road um, on the way to Ashland. Uh, it consisted of installing two benches, uh, a 15 foot bridge, and um, trail clearing. Um, two people I'd like to thank were my dad and um, Karen Bo uh, Bograd. They both helped me a significant amount throughout the process. So. I'm Nate Shingleton, in a Faith Community Church in Hopkinton. I, uh, in the parking lot, I replaced all these uh, dead trees and plants, these little islands in between the parking lot spaces to make it look nicer and uh, to help the greeting of new people. So we just replaced all those with ones that would live there and not die in the future. Replaced all the new mulch, put new grass in. I'd like to thank uh, Peter Mesit down at um, Western Nurseries in Oppington for uh, donations and uh, helping us plan everything out. I'm Gabriel Lopez. Um, my project was on Carl Martin tra Trail. Um, mainly it was of clear clearing up the trail of brush to make um to meet um Hopkinton Area Land Trust. Um they own the trail so to meet the requirement it has to be arm's length of cutting the brush and make sure that you can actually see the trail.